All right, radio listeners, today we have a return guest from PETA. This is our new guest here in Virginia Fort. And Virginia, we'd like to welcome you to the Conscience of Kansas radio program. Well, thank you so much for having me. Very happy. Now, to do that, we have on our list, they say you are a senior campaigner. Now, does that mean you're old and decrepit like me? What's a senior campaigner do for PETA? Um, well, you know, I travel the country and I um, I I do very stimulating demonstrations, whether it's I'd rather go naked than wear fur or, um, you know, we're, we just did an Elephant Awareness Day here in um, Los Angeles. And, you know, anything, we do visual demonstrations to help bring attention to the cruelties that are going on every day that people might not know about. What did you call it there to start? You said stimulating. What was that called? <laughs> stimulating demonstrations. Okay. Very visual Visually stimulating demonstrations. Well, I was going to ask you about getting naked for animals because uh, we've had, uh, you'll be our third guest from PETA. We had Ryan Hulling on a while back and he worked in the universities. And then we had a a young lady that was uh, from Canada. I don't have her name in front of me, but they were getting naked up there in Canada in the winter in protest to uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I hadn't seen a lot of uh, lately, a lot of those. uh, photos of the girls getting nude or almost nude and stuff. I didn't know if that was still going on, but you've answered that question, Virginia. <laughs> so we know that. Well, uh, tell folks uh, your website just to get it right out there in front and, and some of the things, other things, you know, what you're working on and stuff like that. Well, you know, people can visit PETA.org to see video footage for themselves of either animals being abused in the circus, in the cosmetics industry, um, you know, obviously used for clothing and, and for food, and people can see exactly what they're supporting when they're buying these animal-derived uh, products. I saw one uh, interesting deal on uh, monkeys being transported over the airlines for testing, and that uh, you guys are working on stopping some of that stuff. And, you know, uh, Virginia, I'm going to ask you some of the uh, I guess devil's advocate questions that a lot of folks over here in the heartland would probably ask if they were talking to a PETA person for the first time. You know, when I think about animals, especially like monkeys being tested for frivolous things like to make lipstick or whatever, it's things that uh, are just uh, cosmetic things or just things to sell to make money. I think I'd be absolutely with you on that. I mean, that would seem like just uh, useless death. But when it comes to the idea of animals, uh, if we're going to find a cure, now in the article here, if I read it right, they were talking about uh, a, one of uh, the monkeys was being tested for hepatitis. I think that's what was they highlighted in there. Well, hepatitis is a pretty bad uh, disease, but you know, if it were AIDS or if it was cancer or something to that effect, I have a much more of a dilemma with that. If you could save human lives with animal lives, would it be the position of PETA that, you know, you'd let those diseases go to make sure that animals weren't killed in the testing for those kind of cures? Well, first of all, you know, I, I do think that we can agree that, you know, testing for cosmetics for, for vanity purposes is absolutely ridiculous. There's, you know, no excuse for yeah, it. I'm with um, you there. And as, as far as testing for, um, for you know, new reliable drugs and, and in terms of curing diseases, what we should be concentrating on is finding alternatives. Um, I think the European uh, equivalent to, you know, a, a board essentially that's put together by the government to find alternatives to animal testing. You know, our U- European counterpart count found 23, you know, very effective alternatives to animal testing, um, and the United States only found four. Uh, we definitely need to start, you know, uh, putting more of our resources into more reliable tests. I think it's 90% of tests that are proven effective on animals are proven ineffective and, and even dangerous on, on humans. So the, 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 the idea that you're forwarding is that, you know, if you test it on an animal, it works and might not work on a human. And I, I don't doubt that there's some of that as well. And some of the cures we get that are non-animal related don't always work too. And that's why we have the FDA and they try to weed out bad stuff. My whole deal, I guess, as a conservative Looking at what I call, I think of as a liberal organization. You may not think it's liberal, PETA, but I do. <laughs> so when, when I look at it, I think, uh, you know, uh, that our pets or animals, when we have them, we love them. And in many respects, we start to think of them as, as people, as your kids. I mean, I know lots of people that have uh, pets that they consider their children. But 
to me, they're not our children. And uh, when it comes to saving our children or our loved ones or humans, that I have a more clear delineation. And I wonder if sometimes PETA sees animals' worth and value as the same or more than humans. Am I just talking crazy? I think that, you know, we, we definitely need to take into consideration these animals can feel pain, mm-hmm. fear, and, they, and, you know, they fear of pain, and they can suffer the same as we can. And I think that is the one thing that people really need to, to uh, concentrate on, not if animals should have the same rights as us, because obviously they don't have the same cognitive thinking or, you know, they don't have the same ability to express their, their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions to us. Uh, my cat at home, I, you're going to write this off as the crazy cat lady, but, you know, my cat at home, I, I, you know, I know if he, if he wants to play, I know if he's hungry, you know what I mean? Like, he has a way of communicating with me. Yeah. And I, I have no doubt that, you know, uh, he, he is smart and he can feel pain and he can suffer and he gets sad. And, and I think that, that, you know, anybody who has a cat or dog at home can agree with that. Right. Um, but, you know, these animals, especially in laboratories, you know, if, if this kind of thing was done to cats and dogs, people, you know, actually last year there was a case in North Carolina um, where these dogs, we we have undercover video footage, and, you know, these beagles, I think they were, they were being tested on, there were 30-something of them, and people were absolutely outraged, but just the same things are happening to, you know, mice and rats and and monkeys and uh, every single day, but people are not as outraged because they can't connect with them on the same level. True, true. How far down the level do we go? I know a while back, and as a matter of fact, I think it was the last time, it's been a while since I've had PETA folks on, that uh, they were angry at Obama for killing a fly. How far <laughs> How far down the line do uh, do the PETA folks go? And I mean, do they, do they like the malaria mosquitoes? I mean, <laughs> tell me. Well, you know, first of all, the Obama thing, that was people came to us with asking us our, our opinion on that. Um, you know, we, they, we do have humane bug catchers on our on our website, it's PETA.org, and we have a whole little shopping center and, you know, humane bug catchers. But, um, you know, as far as how far the line goes, if, if an animal has the capacity to suffer, if they have a central nervous system, and, you know, we can tell that they feel pain, you know, like when you'll see video footage of uh, ca- uh, cow handlers on factory farms or in slaughterhouses, like, twist a cow's tail and, and essentially break it, and you can hear that cow scream obviously that cow is in pain um you know i'm not really sure how far how far the line goes but i you know for myself i just try to uh live my life in a way that's not hurting animals as much as possible well you know we had a bull out there at the farm i'm, I'm a farm boy I, I lived on the farm <laughs> and i'll tell you i've even gotten naked for animals myself i've you know pooped a few times in the woods and stuff so i can't <laughs> but i i tell you something that i see out there in nature, actually in nature, not looking at nature from the zoo inside a big metropolis, but out there in, in the Kansas country, is that the animals eat one another. <laughs> they, they, they're not, you know, the, the cycle of life out there is uh, dead or alive. Uh, animals uh, tend to, to clean up and they, they call one another. And so I have an, an issue with uh, eating the animals. And we have deer season out here. And even in Kansas, that's not an expanding metropolis of growth like many states. We have, uh, if we didn't have the deer seasons, um, then we'd be hitting those deers on any road. And uh, we'd be having the accidents. I mean, we have tons of them anyway. I used to be a law enforcement officer. I used to work the deer wrecks and things like that. It seems like um, that there is um, some harmony with a man taking uh, advantage of that. Now, I suppose if PETA was running the, the law there in Kansas, we wouldn't probably kill the deer, but wouldn't there be natural repercussions that would be negative? The deer eating all the all the crops in the fields and hitting all the cars and uh, things of nature. Shouldn't we eat a few animals every once in a while just to keep, you know, just to keep things from going into chaos? Well, you know, first of all, I think that when we're talking about eating eating animals on an everyday level, people are just going to Walmart or their local grocery store and, and grabbing that packaged, you know, steak or chicken breast off the off the shelves, not really knowing exactly what went into it. And that's like uh, not only the cruelty, but that's also, you know, uh, antibiotics, growth hormones, all of these horrible drugs that are, that are going into your system. Um, you know, as, as, you know, obviously deer hunting and uh, is, is much different. Um, but, you know... <laughs> I got a feeling you wouldn't shoot a deer, Virginia. I got a feeling you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't shoot a deer. You're and right. I'm just interested in, in why. 
<laughs> I'm not one to tra- trap you or anything. I'm just, it just, uh, to my, uh, to me, there is, I mean, we're not even, you know, I come here from the Bible. We're in the Bible, but I'm not for sure where you're, where you're talking to me from, but here in the Bible Belt, you know, people, they, they, they try to live good lives and they do a lot of it biblically. And if you go from a biblical background, they talk about man's dominion of the earth and being the top of, of the animals. And yes, being responsible, being responsible and yes, not being cruel for cruelty's sake and stuff, but, uh, but, uh, it, you know, eating meat almost seems like a Christian value. Now, I know some folks can't or have intolerances to some things, and I know that you can survive. You can literally subsist without eating any meat by hitting other things heavier. But uh, it just um, it seems weird. I just say it just seems weird to, to think that, you know, no, no eating of any animals and there aren't ramifications to the earthly environment. Uh, tell me where I'm crazy. Well, you know, I think the, the one thing that the Bible does teach us is compassion. And, uh, you know, Jesus mm-hmm. was, was walking this earth thousands of years ago. And I, I can say that, you know, we have um, come so far since then. You know, like, like you said, like we don't, I don't need to eat animals in order to survive, in order to be healthy. Um, and, you know, frankly, I, I feel so much healthier than, than I was when I was a meat eater. Um, you know, all of those antibiotics, all that fat, all that cholesterol is becoming, from, from the animal, is becoming fat and cholesterol in my body. And I just didn't want to put that in there anymore. Um, and, you know, we all understand that it's unchristian to torture and kill cats and dogs. But, you know, turkeys, pigs, cows, they're, they're not as cute and cuddly as puppies and kittens, but they have the exact same capacity for suffering. What people need to understand is that if they're eating meat, they're endorsing cruelty to animals. Hmm. Well, I mean, again, Jesus ate meat. Are the people at Pete, at Pete are you godless heathens over there? I mean, is the Bible just uh, just kind of counter to your ideological belief system? Well, I'm going to say that we're an animal rights organization. Um, we don't really have a stance as, as to, you know, we have plenty of people who uh, at the office are, you know, religious, whichever you know, route they take in Christianity. Um, you know, I, I know plenty of people that I work with here at the office who, you know, do believe in, in God and compassion. And, and you know, if, if we look at the Garden of Eden before, you know, that whole apple incident, um, yeah. it was... It, it was, was fruit. It was fruit, food. Virginia, that sent them all down. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we can all, all agree that, you know, apples are not evil. <laughs> right, absolutely. And we all know that, you know, a vegetarian diet is good, good for our bodies. Um, and, you know, the way that these, you know, it, this isn't a family farm we're talking about anymore. This is mass production. And the bottom line, whether it's, you know, in the vivisection industry, in the entertainment industry, clothing, or food industry, is a dollar amount. And, you know, so they're not really taking into consideration the animal's welfare. They want to get as many animals as they can through the slaughter line, which means that, you know, that, you know uh, chickens, uh, they have their their throat slit while they're still conscious they're, they have uh, cows will have their horns ripped out of their heads and then they're branded um like burned and they have brands burned into their skins and this is all without painkillers i don't think there's anything you know christian about that that's not compassionate that's not um you know that's not taking care of of what of you know these animals who we quote unquote have dominion over what uh, what's your guys's position or um as far as the other byproducts, are you guys like vegan? Don't take the milk because that's exploiting them, or don't take the cheese because that's exploiting them, or the eggs from the chicken. How far does PETA go with, um, you know? Well, we, you know, we, we obviously advocate for eating no animals, no animal products, um, whether it's leather or eating leather, wearing leather um, mm-hmm. or, or other animal skins, using products that were tested on animals or, you know, eating anything that comes from an animal, if you think about it. God gave us, God gave women breast milk to feed our babies. This is, this is, he gave cows, you know, their milk to feed their babies. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me go to a couple of your campaigns real quick. And, yeah. uh, and, you know, I got to tell you, I mean, I don't agree with a lot of what you're talking about, but I appreciate <laughs> the dialogue and something I tell people in Radio Land is that PETA is really good about if you ask for an interview, they, they get somebody up here to talk to you. And obviously, Virginia Fort uh, is very knowledgeable on the PETA stuff. So I appreciate the dialogue. Um, I was going to talk about the, the Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, 
campaign. I actually can't find the banner now that I was there the other day, but I, I've I've talked about it before. Now you guys, if, if I'm correct, you guys want to run KFC out of business. I mean, you 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 don't want them selling chicken. They that, that basically what they sell. Well, it, well, I mean, <laughs> am I wrong? You don't want them no, to sell not, chicken. Absolutely. I mean, we we don't want any uh, businesses selling animals for human consumption, obviously. But we know that that's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, right now, we're kind of just asking people or asking these companies uh, to switch to a, le- a less cool method of slaughter. And tofu. Actually, KFCs in Canada have done. Yeah, they did. The, they're doing the tofu, aren't they? Or some kind of tofu burger? It seemed like that's what I was talking about last time. Yeah, they, they actually they switched to controlled atmosphere killing, and then they also introduced a, uh, um, a faux chicken sandwich. Well, that's a good step in putting them out of business. <laughs> Well, I, actually, I, mean, you know, I, I did that campaign in 2008, and you know, we did the victory campaign. We went across Canada from coast to coast, and uh-huh. we're handing out these free veggie chicken sandwiches, and their business uh, doubled because we, you know, we now, were there showing people how compassionate constructive fried chicken is. Now, Virginia, I've been up in Canada. I've been to Toronto. I've been all over that place. Did you get nude up in Canada? Because it is cold up there. I did. I grew up in Toronto. I know it's cold. Oh well, then you're that. you're already <laughs> acclimated to that, so no big deal. Uh, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. Do you guys want to run them out of business? What's the scoop with that? Well, absolutely. You know, I mean, there are so many circuses out there that that don't use animals in their act. You know, Cirque du Soleil, Pickle Family Circus. They rely they rely on willing human participants. Um, you know, Ringling actually just paid one of the largest fines in USDA history for violations to the Animal Welfare Act. Um, there have been numerous... Was that with the elephants? Yes. You know, and, and, you know, in the last 12 years, at least 24 ringling elephants have died. And only one of these uh, deaths has, has been attributed to old age. Baby elephants you know, have died from being torn from their mothers. One elephant died giving birth. Three others had tuberculosis, several, several more uh, from arthritis and foot disease, which actually comes from... Uh, being forced to stand, not being able to walk, uh, standing in their own feces. You know, the elephants in the wild, they'll, they'll walk up to 30 miles a day, but when they're traveling with Ringling Circus, they're chained for uh, up to 100 hours at a time, you know, 50 weeks out of the year. Uh, you know, for, for these animals that they say they're quote-unquote protecting, it, it sounds like they're more torturing them and, and using them for their bottom line, hmm. with, you know, the dollar bill. Well, <laughs> certainly um, the circus is known for the elephants and, and other animals. I mean, they're sort of a, a staple. If you're going to see those things, you're expecting to see the circus itself is sort of a dying breed. And there used to be a lot more of, of those around. And uh, it's hard to know, you know. Um, I, I certainly don't want to see animals be beaten and tortured. I don't know that I'm compelled so much from the the video I saw of the of the guys with the switches it sounds you know just heinous I guess the devil's advocate question someone might ask you is that those elephants their skin is not like babies bottoms I don't know those some people say and and that uh, the, the elephants to even acknowledge your presence when you're moving them around uh, they have to uh, you know make those those the hits like that I guess your position would be that they don't. <laughs> You know, elephants—they do have very tough skin, but but just like us, they have very—they have spots on, of their on their bodies, but the skin is very thin. This is, you know, behind their ears, by, um, you know, behind their their knees and elbows, um, in their armpits, uh, you know, and that's that's those are the spots where Ringling will use the bull hooks. And basically, uh, a bull hook is about usually like two or three feet long, it's got a hook at the end, a very sharp hook, and it, it's weighted like a golf club is weighted. Um, so, you know, they can get a really good, uh, I want to say, um, ugh, shot. I don't want to say shot at the elephant, but, you know, they're, they are weapons. They're, honest to God, they're weapons. Um, and, you know, the majority of, of Ringling's elephants were actually captured in the wild as babies, you know, after their mothers were shot and killed. None of them ever have a chance of seeing their home again. Um, you know, I, I think that one of the most, effective ways that we can save the elephant species is to instead of you know captive breeding which you know these animals are are kept in very small enclosures compared to what they would have in the wild you know why don't we take the same money that we're using to keep them here in the united states and use it to save their native habitat okay 
All right. Well, that's interesting. It's interesting. And uh, I certainly I certainly could meet you to the degree that um, just out and out beating animals for the vicious joy of beating whatever kind of demanded people that have that kind of joy. I don't like. As a matter of fact, I used to be a police officer, so I used to help animal control. Used to go, and you're not the cat lady, Virginia, because the, the cat ladies had 30, 40 cats, and they actually, those cats were neglected because there were way too many to be fed properly and to be housed properly, and we used to have to go in and uh, remove those cats and find people, and the same thing with, with dogs. And so I've I've spent a portion of my life trying to protect animals. We just kind of differ on what man's dominion is of the planet. And I just don't know what kind of world we'd have if, if Pete was in absolute control. We'd probably have pigs walking down the, the center of the street because we couldn't fence them out. But, but, but I really appreciate your time. And uh, you're always welcome on my program if you want to come back and talk about different things. And uh, Virginia Fort from PETA, you have any other parting thoughts before we sign off with you today? Um, spay and neuter your animals. That's the most important thing that we can do to help control the animal overpopulation crisis, all these cats and dogs being dumped in the shelters. Very good. Virginia Fort, not naked with us today, but naked on certain occasions for fighting <laughs> for the rights of animals. Appreciate you coming on the Conscience of Kansas radio program. Well, thank you so much for having me. All righty. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.